You know the company Ford, the makers of Kuga and EcoSport? Well, this isn't an EcoSport. Before this garage door opens, this actual car is for sale at the moment. The link to the listing will be in the description. If it's sold already, it won't be. And while you're in there, there's a red notification button. You should seriously click on it because we've got tons of cool stuff planned for you. But now the garage door is almost open and one thing is immediately apparent. Pictures don't do Focus RS just. They don't really know how or why, but it has presence in a riffraff sort of way. But of course that means that before we even drove the RS out of the garage, we needed to hook up our Yobo meter to the OBD port and it went absolutely haywire. But just as you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, you shouldn't always trust the OBD Yobo meter. As much as it may seem that this focus has merely been to a local costume shop to buy an unbranded Star Wars Halloween mask, I can assure you, it isn't a mask. This focus is Darth Vader himself. That in itself is ironic because when we did drive it out of the garage, we realized it has the turning radius of a dead star orbiting a galaxy far, far away. And the power output is quite similar as well. Our thoughts of this car being some modern spaceship with having to press three different buttons at the same time to deactivate the stability control were, well, false. Don't let the words like Ford Revo Knuckle or Electronic Limited Slip Dip fool you. Especially with this million horsepower tuned version. This car doesn't play Travis Scott via a Bluetooth at Beats headphone. It prefers Led Zeppelin on vinyl. Actually, we're quite sure this thing doesn't even know who Travis Scott or what Blue and Tooth is. The 2.5-liter five-cylinder engine and its Audi Quattro-esque rumble awakens every single cell in us to think that we're driving a modern iteration of a fire-breathing late 80s group B Monster. And to understand the birth of the RS500 and the story behind it, you have to peek back around 35 years into motorsports history. <laughs> In the late 80s, touring car racing was at its all-time popularity high with car makers and F1 drivers trying to find their 5 minutes of spotlight and manufacturers boosting their car sales on the following Monday of the race. The original Ford Sierra Cosworth RS500 was a glorious result of European race circuit dominance. It was developed from the original base model to its maximum potential through its various evolutions, as they so tastefully call them in the auto industry. Indrush. When you put it in Italian, it's Evoluzione, it's okay, but... Evo. Evo. The word of absolute sophistication in automotive world. Back then, the witty engineers at Ford Motorsport figured that bolting a Cosworth engine to a humongous Garrett turbocharger is the reasonable thing to do. Eventually, the dominance of the head size turbo on wheels whistling away became too much for the FIA, and they decided to ban turbos from touring car top group A class altogether. This left the legacy of the RS500 to stick around for future generations, and also enabled it to achieve the cult status. It was the forbidden fruit, the thing that the FIA deemed too dangerous to race, and the cult continued with the focus. Just so we could get punched directly in the stomach by the turbo lag from its 2010 iteration. And that is exactly what this 2010 million horsepower Focus feels like. Push the loud pedal and you're engaged in a three-way boxing match where you're fighting for your life against both Anthony Joshua and Vladimir Klitschko, both of whom seem to only be interested in beating the crap out of you. I know this car has independent steering axis and very clever quave locking diff, but let's put it this way. When Joshua is rearranging your nose while Klitschko works your stomach, you're hardly going to notice whether your own boxing clubs are lined with real leather or fake. See kids, this is why you learn history, because it tends to repeat itself. But let's not get totally carried away with the power. Let's give Klitschko and Joshua a run for their money. Because even though the power is somewhat overwhelming, the chassis setup works so well with balancing and settling the car down that it feels like someone just put a Mark II Ford Focus shell on top of a well-designed sports car. Having a fairly long wheelbase also makes it surprisingly drivable once you've gained the courage to do so. Even while trying to unsettle the car by not braking straight, it's very predictable in its movements and stays happily under control. It's the torque steer where you have to focus on keeping the car on the road and pray that this time it won't wheel spin that much while accelerating in fourth gear. And so we said our prayers and fought back. Okay, okay, okay. 
We need to stop and calm down and take a look. What is the f***ing atom bomb making all the noises? <laughs> making us go like hell. As it so happens, there's actually a five-cylinder engine bolted onto a turbo the size of my head. That's what's making the racket. That's what's making the one million horsepower and two million pound-feet of torque. And also, that's what's making my hands shake. Can we calm it down? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, well, what, uh, the biggest thing that surprises me is the fact that there's a huge amount of torque steer and a lot of uh, a lot of turbo lag, which makes this makes this car nostalgic in some way. Yeah, I was looking forward for it being like a modern take, modern take on a sport of a sporty Ford, but actually it hunks back to the 80s and the original course words and RS is way more violent and analog than I thought it would be. There's turbo noise, there's turbo lag. What surprises me as well is the since it has quite a long wheelbase for a hot hatch, it's, it seems to be very stable under braking. It gives me kind of a comfortable feeling of driving a car. I yeah, it doesn't wobble around even if you have a bit of a steering angle going on when braking. But the engine, oh my god, the engine is like an atom bomb. Right it definitely, it's like an over the top hot hatch. And um, I, I wonder what this car could do against any regular sports car on a track. It probably would drive circles around them. It's, it's crazy that you can push so much out of this chassis or this, this kind of body. Yeah, this is maybe over the limit of a hot hatch. I, now that I've driven it, I wouldn't even consider this to be a hot hatchback. This is like, this is something else. Yeah. This is an 80s fun car with the drivetrain in backwards. If obviously this isn't completely stuck. We have tuned engine, we have different kind of exhaust from Middletech from UK and lots of upgraded parts. Stage 2 or stage 25.9, whatever they're called. This is a limited production run, obviously. There's yeah, 500, 500 things. Made. But is this the sort of car that's going to shoot up in value? Is this BMW 1M? I always tend to think that the first generation uh, Focus RS was kind of a, it was kind of lame in some sense. And now they're obviously talking about making an RS 500 maybe of the new uh, generation 3 Focus. So I would say like if the generation 3 RS 500 doesn't come out, I would think that this in the next five to 10 years would probably be something special to have. Never judge a Ford Focus by its matte black paint. Yeah. <laughs> so the Focus RS 500 is a monster of a car. It looks quite good in a heavyweight boxer sort of way and it has the heritage and the pedigree. But I'm afraid there's a huge matte black elephant in the room and that's the price. To someone not as interested in cars as you or me, try to explain this. Yeah, I just bought a 10 euro Ford Focus for 40,000 euros. 40 freaking thousand euros. Trying to explain this to your family or significant other, it's going to be a tougher fight than the steering wheel of this RS during full acceleration. But there are a couple of very good reasons why you'd want to do it anyway. The collector car market is at its all-time peak at the moment, and it hasn't shown any signs of slowing down anytime soon. It wasn't that long ago when someone bought an old and slow convertible Ferrari for 12 million pounds, and we thought that it was as high as anyone would go. Then it was 20 million. 25, 30. And now we're seeing cars being auctioned for 50 million. There were only 500 of these Ford Focuses made. They are selling for 40k now as they were a couple of years ago, and we reckon you won't see the price going down anywhere soon, if ever. In fact, there's not going to be anything quite like this ever again. There are rumors of the new RS having an exclusive model in the near future, but I guarantee it won't be like this. It will be four-wheel drive and much more sophisticated than this older model ever was. The newer model will know how to hook up Apple CarPlay and doesn't know what final is. And the only Led Zeppelin song it will know is Smoke and the Water. And this brings us to the biggest advantage of this, let's be honest. A bit dim-witted Ford Focus. Just like listening to Since I've Been Loving You from vinyl, rather than blasting the new Travis Scott album via Bluetooth headphones, driving the RS500 is an event. The owner told us that it certainly is so for him. 
he usually just drives his van. He brings out the RS500 when he wants to have a bit of fun, not when he's going to be sitting in the morning traffic jam. It's loud, it's right as harsh, it's dangerous. So when you're commuting to work, you don't want to arrive sweaty and exhausted. But if you're going for a drive, you don't care. And for us, it certainly was an event as well. We giggled like little schoolyard chumps when we heard the childish turbo noises and the nature of the power delivery was so aggressive that it made us sweat and giggle even more. Let's put it this way. We've been in F12s and turbo S's and smiled and giggled less. So, if the 40k for a 10 year old focus seems a bit steep, think of it this way. We're pretty sure you cannot find a turbo S or F12 Berlinetta for 40k.